people have this idea that I came in, used the hijab to, to get famous, to get to where I wanted to go, and then left it. That requires so much pre-planning. <laughs> Hey. hey, I'm Zena and I'm Mia and welcome to another episode of Sprinkles and Spice and everything about divorce babes divorce <laughs> but not just we're also going to be talking about growing evolving changing our guest today needs no introductions but we are going to give her one she is one of the first Middle Eastern influencers to pave the way in the industry she is the owner of Soul Cool and Curl Lab and she recently made her debut in the Netflix original Honeymoonish. Please welcome Asya. Asya, welcome to the show. Hi. Ooh. Hey. Yay. Hi, hey. <laughs> Asya, how are we today? We are okay. We are moving. We're yes. vibing. What are you? What about you guys? Like, how are we doing? We are excited. Good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's been We're a week. It's, it's a weekend. Almost weekend. Is oh, it? Yeah. What? Don't know what day of week it is. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Everything is just a blur. All the days just yeah. melt together when you have responsibilities. <laughs> I just know when my nine to five friends can hang out and when they can't. That's true. Like, oh, it's the weekend. <laughs> That's true. And you're like, oh my god, I can see you. It's crazy. Yeah. But you know, don't you love meeting up with your nine to five friends? Because like, I love corporate drama. Oh my. Yes, it's so interesting. I love corporate drama. I've never worked in a corporate environment before. Went maybe for like five seconds. I don't know. It gave me like some structure in life. But like honestly, nine to five drama. It's so good. Is it really? I oh feel like God. it gets old fast. Dude. Well, it gets old to them, but not to us. Not to yeah. us. Yeah. Like Pretty it's true. new for me every time. And yeah. it's great. It's <laughs> great. And I like I don't happen. have to. And it's always like interpersonal like dating drama and then like someone partied and a thing and I'm like <gasps> and like Justin looks at me by the water cooler yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, he yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so into that yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you say Justin or Justin Justin, <laughs> Justin if he's outside of Kuwait okay Kuwait. I was like let's contextualize this let's yeah, make yeah. it as Kuwaiti as possible Justin do they have water coolers they have water coolers yeah they have water yeah, coolers yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it depends Justin's not even at a big cat when I can get their city in Spanish latte then Kitty, you know that's the vibe. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I worked good. in corporate for like three years. Oh, yeah, you survived. Corporate style. I did. I don't know how. <laughs> but what, can I ask a question? Does corporate give you like a sense of major security? Because like this creative field, absolutely yes. none of that. Honestly, that's the one thing that yeah. I miss is that financial security. A, yeah, and uh, just having structure in your life. Because yeah. like now I'm like kind of all over the place i'm just doing like <laughs> three jobs at the same time yeah but like you have to have like self-discipline mm. but with like a corporate job it's like you have a manager you do someone tells you what like you have to do also the upward mobility of it kind of like knowing where you're gonna land next and what yeah. it is that you're working towards when you're in a creative field or when you're your own boss there's never like a what is it that i'm working towards kind of thing you're yeah. kind of like you plug away at doing the best that you possibly can at what it is that you're doing but you're not like I need to, I don't know, um, make vice president. Like, I, I am that. I don't know. So <gasps> like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just no structure. I feel like I'm so delulu that, so I did corporate for four months and I was like, this is the worst environment ever. I have to be here every single day at the same time. It's not creative. So I, I didn't. Leave. I never, I never got there on time. I like, I feel for my boss. Like, I was yeah. never on time. Yeah, same. And my boss was like, why are you leaving early? Honestly, and I was don't like, I gotta go. Like, clocking in and clocking out. To me, that's no. the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. And at the same time, like, it can get very political. Like, you think, like, oh, okay, you know, it, there is some sort of, like, um, uh, like, end goal or you mm. think, like, you know where you're gonna go, but it, it gets really political. And then that... I think to me, that's more draining than the work itself. Yeah, mm. I would say like all of the interpersonal, like when I was talking about corporate tea, like I meant it, like there is always so much yeah. that's going on. And like you said, it's super political. Like yeah. who makes what, who gets the most attention, what meeting, what, what, and then he put his hand up in the meeting and then I was the center of attention. And I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> what does that mean? You know, like, does that mean good things? Like, yeah, but I things love I an office girl storyline. I think it's so cute. Like <laughs> I walked in, he walked in, we look at each other and then... I love the, I love the romance. Yeah, as long yeah. as I quit right after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't want it to become anything. It's an office crush. Oh, this yeah. This isn't like you working at like a bank looking for a husband vibes. Oh no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. We don't. No. I don't. He doesn't have to speak to me. No. <laughs> I love vibes. Yeah. Look into my soul and I'm looking to your soul. I literally lived through that. I actually 
<laughs> you had an office crush. I had. He was office in the crushes. Office. He was on the a different floor. And then, you know, like sometimes when we get to work at the same time and we're in the elevator together, <gasps> or the elevator the opens elevator. and he's there, and I'm Stop. just like, no, the <laughs> not the elevator. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Does the elevator have music? Like jazz music. So it's kind did of. Did you give, like, when you walk into the, did you give, like, a slide? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it you did. Yeah, you know? Like, a summer, I come. A virtual eyes. Yeah. Did you, like, do the thing where you pretend on whether or not you're going to get into the elevator with him? What do you, wait, like, what? Like, Yanni said, ah. Ma, no, no, that, ma, that could never be me. That, that could oh, never, never girl, be me. Real, ma, I got umper, I do. You know? No. Did you let him If press? anything, I'll be like, get out of the elevator. I'll be doing it after <laughs> I walk in, like, I'm like, alaikum. <laughs> Try me now. <laughs> I dare you. Like, I don't know why that's the energy I have to go into an elevator with. Like, who are you going to fight in an elevator? Why? Like, it's a five second interaction. <laughs> And I go in like guns blazing, like bah, 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 try me some acorn. <laughs> Why am I like this? It's an eight a.m. and she's ready for war. She's Dude, I, I come in ready, like <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, you know, it's not yeah. the energy that I ever had. And I would walk in the elevator and see people. Like, oh, I'm, seen I'm here. And this is gonna ruin my reputation. I'm a funny girl. I cannot be seen at work. And I would just <laughs> what? what? She's like, I cannot be seen. I'm working. a funny girl. I cannot be seen working. I cannot be seen. Be I'm here serious. for the laughses. I'm Fuck not up. serious. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Yeah, that's that's my life model. <laughs> Literally four months in corporate. <laughs> I'm here for a good time. This is not a good time, so now I'm not this here for a long time, time either. I, I gotta go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get into. Oh, the I thought episode. that was us getting yeah, into it. That's it, you guys. That's all. Maybe that was the episode. Today. Corporate tea is the best. Wait, but like, Bye. no one quit your jobs. Everyone work. You know, this is not an incentive to leave. Stay. Corporate <laughs> no, security. Don't want to be on the streets, do you? Do you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless you are fine financially and you don't need to work. Unless Daddy's all money is working you. overtime. <laughs> that is not, not even. It must be nice, though. I, I, <laughs> all right. Let's talk about something. Okay. That's not corporate. Okay. Like you. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not corporate. You're an artist. You're uh, creative. A, a, artiste. An artiste. Artiste. I like that. <laughs> I'll take it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I've been wanting to start this um, series because I find myself, because I'm really like disillusioned by just my job in social media right now. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if I want to continue my career in social media the same way it has been. It just doesn't feel right anymore. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, now with everything that's going on with Feltlin, it's opened my eyes, I think, to a lot of how, where money goes and like the flow of, of, of money and like, where it, what my part in all of this actually is. And I don't feel good anymore being part of like the, I don't know, like the, the capitalist machine of trying to sell people a product that is basically going to send money back to something I'm absolutely yeah. unequivocally against, you know? Mm. And so now I just, it's, the money is not there in influencing anymore. Do you know what I mean? It used mm -hmm. to be able that I could, I, I could take advertising or I could take campaigns that were, that would, that would carry our office and carry my employees for, for the year. And um, now, you know, there's no more, there's no more work in beauty in a way that sits right. You know, yeah. it's like nothing feels good. You don't want to work with a Unilever and a L'Oreal yeah. and I mean, an Estee Lauder and a. I mean, yeah, best Lauder's out. But it's everything. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing is. So back when when you know everyone started talking about like where the money goes, I remember being on the phone to Zainab actually, and being like, oh, we can't use this and we can't use that mm -hmm. and we can't use this, and I was like, this is everything it's everything yeah. i walk no, in my everything. bathroom you that's everything you start to look back on your life and you're like wow i've been somehow contributing yeah. to this absolutely and, and you're like absolutely. how everything i eat everything i look at yeah everything i watch everything i wear yeah is somehow contributing to it, it changes everything yeah. don't yeah. you feel like yeah. and i i think for the past uh 10 months like you feel like people kind of like they're I don't know, we're kind of torn where we're trying to like move on with our lives, but there is this kind of like underlying, like, I don't know. It's like, almost like a white noise in the background. Yeah, head. this white noise in the background where you're like, kind of like everything's been a lie in a way where you're like, yeah. you realize how we're viewed. You realize like how little our lives mean yeah. to the rest of the and world. And our voices as well. Yeah. Like, you know, like I think we were having this conversation with a friend yesterday where she was like, you know, like you feel helpless mm -hmm. and it's so sad because, yeah, we're while well, we're trying to use our platforms, mm -hmm. but it's like 
at some point you're like the louder we scream the more they like yeah. just ignore yeah you know? i say a lot that it feels like screaming into like a distort like a, a screaming into a fan and you're just hearing your echoed like distorted voice coming back at you because we're just we're in a bit of an echo chamber where we we are the ones that know what has been happening this is not new information to arabs yeah. you know what yeah. i mean so like what what are we what are we actually getting out there like what are we with, where is this going like and how come we've not been able to stop it like this is millions and millions and millions and millions of people that are now participating and we're not able to stop anything and uh yeah no social media just it's i think it's also the fact that like the social platforms that we're using are also censoring voices yeah, and that yeah. makes me really disillusioned to, yeah. to social media as well so i don't know i don't i'm not really sure like what the future of of social looks like but i do know that i mean for influencing I'm finding it harder and harder to follow people that are not going to be ethically or morally conscious in the things that they're taking and knowing that this is still going on and you're now taking, you're on like a Vichy L'Oreal trip, yeah. like question mark, question mark, question mark. I haven't taken anything. It's been like 10 months. So we don't make money. I've downsized my office. We've had to downsize office, uh, downsize my, my team. Um, we, we take nothing anymore. So like now I, I've, I've took, I sat down two months ago and just redid what I thought my life was going to look like. And if I'm going to be an influencer anymore, I really don't think so. Like, I don't, I don't think it's something that I, I'm comfortable participating in anymore. So yeah, I was, I was thinking of like, what am I going to do content wise? Cause I still want to make content and enjoy making yeah. content mm. and I'm crafty. <laughs> yeah. You're such a creative girl. I'm a crafty are, girl. Yeah. So I was like, why don't I just do couch crafts with Asya? Because like all I do is sit on the couch and craft things. Like, oh my God. I I'm would that. Into that. Like I'd be beaded. I'm, I would, I just did like beaded shoes for no reason. Wait, you know, you should, level that up and make it asmr coded and oh like God, have a yes. mic where we hear the sounds and everything yeah that's I'm a good idea because you have a soothing voice do yeah, I see us too. we joke yeah. about doing asmr no one is tuning in to zayna when no. i'm screaming and cackling what? And we it. could we could never be soothing i i, I, I let me close my eyes and listen try go <laughs> ready for like, no. i see exactly what you're talking about <laughs> you know what i mean did that work Bob? this trial is like you know what we could do we have nails we could do okay let me try again okay ready 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 go <laughs> bottom shaking his head no <laughs> i don't even have headphones on and i still feel like personally attacked by the high <laughs> I, I, I tried <laughs> Okay, well, other than not being soothing. <laughs> no, but, but going back to you saying that you're a crafty queen. Yeah, I'm a crafty queen. I'm a crafty queen. Um, I love a craft. Isn't that how you started, though, yeah. in social media? Like, yeah. I, I think you, honestly, like we said in the intro, you really did pave the way for a lot of Middle Eastern yeah. women. Because I think you were one of the first to put yourself out there mm -hmm. because back in the day like no we we post for all pictures like literally this. like if and it's coming back i love that oh my god yeah the yeah where they're like <laughs> it's only from behind and they're like and like all i can see is the back of her head but her highlights are popping so well like, it wouldn't work with you because you don't have hair that is anyone's but no it works for everyone else because they all have the same hairstyle and hair color yeah so i think like, everybody's gonna know it's you yeah yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You that was the beginning of my like my social uh, my life on social was i was posting on a a platform called lookbook and uh i don't know if you guys remember lookbook but like lookbook yeah. was a little thing and noha nabil was living in the states and i was here and we were the only two kuwaitis that were on lookbook and uh in the beginning i tried to hide my face in a lot of the photos because i didn't want my dad to know what i was doing my dad mm -hmm. was gonna be like <laughs> absolutely not uh so yeah i posed with a lot of photos like this but then after a while i was like you know nah Kind of How did you make do. that decision? Was it just like you're fed up and you're like, I'm just going to go? No, I just watched. I watched so many other bloggers. I was part of um, the blo the dot com blog time. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Where it was like, I've, I followed Carla's Closet. I don't know if you guys know Carla's Closet. Her name was Carla, Carla Diaz. And she, <gasps> yeah. I remember Yeah, that. Carla's Closet is amazing. She has an amazing clothing brand now. I don't I know, know if the you, line by K. I love the line by K. So good. She's so amazing. And I'm, so I followed her for a good 15 years. So that's know? the that's the era of Ami Song and yes. Ellie's Girlies. Yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. those vlogs. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like blog time for me. Mm -hmm. And so like I was just frustrated not seeing anyone that looked like us. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was all, all there. And it wasn't like I couldn't adapt anything culturally um, because at the time I was in hijab. Mm -hmm or had just worn it i was like three months in and yeah so i just just felt right just did it got into a bunch of trouble for it but it really it. yeah with yeah. your family or with like society both probably both okay probably both but now we're just like and then guess what happened procedure. everybody was like yeah. trying to be the next asia it's a standard procedure <laughs> thing now which is nice you know like it's nice to yeah. see 
it's it, we've come a long way yeah though. it's changed a lot like like you said like back in the day it was like even if you had a private account you weren't posting your, your pictures you're just posting like, yeah, yeah yeah nature your morning coffee your much <laughs> no this is before matcha. is this really what you guys were going through nature and morning yes. coffee? we want people outside are posting their weekends their parties <clears throat> their lives we have sand no, it was like if and you we're like here's Keshe. <laughs> here's I, some I sand totally and, was, and the there fire. was this like culture where it was like if you posted yourself online, you were like what? It was the same with Facebook. Actually, now I remember because I had a couple of Quitty girlfriends on Facebook. Yeah, and I remember whenever I, I would add them, be like, "What the hell is this?" Meanwhile, with me, I'm like, "Oh God, I, who's who's tagging me on what?" No, we're They've not never posting. Anything, yeah, except for coffee mugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, like we're hyper obsessed with how our image is consumed. Yeah, like, we're like hyper controlling about it. But I love that you, honestly, like what you did really was like groundbreaking at the time because it was like we didn't see a Kuwaiti girl who mm -hmm. was doing that. And then you came in and you were like, fuck everybody. And on top of that, you were um, you were working on a fashion line, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. Yeah. I had a fashion line called 2010 and it was just like a lot of like handmade things. Everything that I did was handmade. Um, I've always been, like I said, like always like kind of crafty. So I did like shredded t-shirts that were like yeah, hand shredded. I remember those. And, like, yeah, I, I, re I was heavily I'm about to bring that shit back, by the way. <laughs> you really like, should. I'm about to I'm about to start that stuff again. So yeah, I wanted to make a shredded shirt again. So I have a, just like a content schedule of craft things that I want to do just because like I'm, it's how I started. I was like studying things and grommeting things. I had grommet machines. I had like holes in all of the kashi. We should have been friends back then. It was fun. She was also an insane crafty <laughs> Yeah, I love a craft. I was married at the time living in the States. Okay. And, and Michael's was my favorite place. Never been to a Michael's. I'm so jealous. Oh. And obviously I would order on Amazon because like you, literally you'd get the packages five seconds. in like five seconds. Yeah. So I was always like ordering studs and like tie dyeing shirts. So <laughs> Just doing I love a stud. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I love stud studs. Do you guys remember, remember? How, how like we'd wear boots that were so studded they weighed a ton <laughs> for no goddamn reason? I still reason. have. What are you talking about? The jacket, the jacket. Jacket. jacket studded like shoulder. Dude, I st I did that myself. And I my studs were like high quality. These studs that I had to order in bulk from the States. Yeah. And oh, they the were heavy, heads, like proper, <laughs> you know, Amity vibes. <laughs> I had to bring it back in. Um, so yeah, no, I, I I would stud I would stud everything by myself. I had like the pliers to to do it like a thingy, and I I made jackets that were just like heavy, crazy. I, mean, I was I was I was not crafty, and I still can't even cut a scissor like straight. <laughs> like if I cut, it just goes sideways. So I was at Urban Outfitters, but I was a studded queen. I just didn't know how to do it. And That's also so important. At some point, something would happen, and like the back of the stud would always scratch my skin, and I was bleeding. And I was like, "Must I suffer for beauty the craft? Is pain. Beauty? beauty is pain. Must, Must I, suffer I suffer for the craft? For what am I doing?" <laughs> Anyways, whatever Vanessa Hudgens wore, I was like, "I'm gonna wear that." So I never got into Vanessa Hudgens. Ooh. Who is your fashion icon? I think yeah, the blog girls. It was probably yeah. Carla. Carla. What about right now? I don't have one. I just like I like I like I like the TikTok like sphere i don't know the tiktok sphere for me is more where i get a lot of style inspiration now but i don't know it's yeah, just a tiktok because i also think like tiktok has a feel that reminds me at least of what the blogs were oh yeah like tumblr yeah like tumblr it's vibes. very <laughs> cold tumblr up, cold are you also a tumblr i was a tumblr i was a tumblr you... but like i stopped that like years ago yeah i had Mia a style still a tumblr i'm still on tumblr are you it's the best place now because everyone left <laughs> no but what's cool about tumblr is that it's not as curated, right? So yeah. we got to the point where Instagram became a feed and a feed aesthetic. And that's so annoying. That's not inspiring. And I think what's cool is that. Yeah, we've gone back to shit posting now. It's, yeah, not, it's not so aesthetic not aesthetic. Everyone. No, not everyone. And you still go on like the big bloggers, uh, bloggers, Instagrammers pages. Yeah. yeah. And you see that everything is sponsored. Everything is an aesthetic. It's, it's true. It's just not relatable. Like, it's not interesting. Like, you all look the same. I follow one person. It's like I follow all of you. Yeah. Whereas on TikTok, it's true. Everyone yeah. has their, their own personality. I like the messy rooms. Yeah. I like the day in their life. I like that. No, everyone's manicured. Like if everyone looks good all the time. Yeah. I'm out. That's Even true. From a marketing perspective, everybody knows like when you're going on Instagram, people now like a more organic approach, but it's more like aesthetic. Yeah. yeah it's like organic. But yeah. TikTok, it's like the 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 messier it is, the more real it is, the better. Yeah. yeah. The more you're like rewarded for it as well. Yeah. Like you're you're rewarded for it not just in the sense of like your audience and what you're getting back but like the algorithm does reward you it pays its creators you know like this is this is a thing that i've had for working in social as long as i have is that instagram doesn't pay creators like at all and like we are the creators that are on instagram are the reason that you're pulling people to the platform you know what i mean mm -hmm. like what 
if you open Instagram and you're only there to like visit with your friends, then you have you have another platform for that. You have like Be Real, you have Facebook, you have whatever. But you're you're on Instagram to like watch content. So the yeah. people that are producing the content are bringing those people to the platform. We're getting people to open the platform for you. So like, why is there no reward system? Like, why is there no creator payment program? Yeah. Um, but for TikTok, they reward their creators. So like, if I'm going to bring people to your app and have people open the app so they can watch what it is that we're doing and I'm giving content to you, then mm-hmm. I should get something. You know, yeah. reciprocal back. It's like YouTube has had that structure for so long. TikTok is great with it. Snapchat is like the best creator program ever. Like that's why so many people use Snapchat here. Instagram is the one that's like, not only are you a Zionist piece of absolute garbage, but you're also awful with your creators. You know, it's a very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. App. So you mentioned earlier, back when you started, you were hijabi. Yes. So we wanted to touch on sort of evolving, sorry, sort of evolving as a woman like especially Mm -hmm. evolving in front of a camera so you know you went from looking a certain way and presenting yourself a certain way to now looking a complete different way which obviously is normal because in the span of 13 14 years years, like that that's that only makes sense yeah so talk to me through that a little bit i don't know i always for the longest time i feel like i did things uh for other people's comfort you know and like it was part I, i don't know if i had gaslit myself into thinking that it was also for my comfort i think to a degree but Every every uh, season of your life serves its purpose, right? Yeah. So like the season of my life that I was in at the time that I chose to put the hijab on and and blog the way that I did, it made sense for me where I was mentally, physically, emotionally mm-hmm. at the time. It's what I needed. I, I wanted like that, um, I guess, like barrier between me and, and everybody else. I, I needed that for a little while. And then I was also married young. I had kids young. Um, my career started really young. So like you get you get caught up in like the the movement of your life like anybody else you know you're you don't take the time to sit with your self and your thoughts on whether or not everything that you are doing is making you super happy and uh 2019 rolled around and i had been not feeling good about how i was online and i mean like i think i think any creator that that is um emotionally in tune is not going to feel great all the time on the internet Mm -hmm. you know like you're never going to feel all it's not peaches and roses and butterflies and but that's all I really put online it was like peaches roses butterflies look at my marriage look at my kids look at my I'm so happy everything is set I'm like I'm doing what I need to do but meanwhile back at the ranch (laughs) not so great you know it wasn't I wasn't doing so well and it was because I, I it was a push and a pull on like um, I would go to the States to visit my ex-husband's at the time's family and like not want to be in a hijab because none of them are in it. And it felt more uncomfortable for me to be in it then, mm-hmm. you know, it's like it drew more attention to me than when I was here. And so like there was a lot of a lot of like, I don't want to be in it on certain things and certain things I do. And then it started to be, I just don't think I really want to be in it. And now I don't want to be in it on the internet because it doesn't feel authentic anymore. Like I'm not, I'm taking away... Um, yeah, I remember this being the thing, but I, I had gotten booked for a trip. Uh, I don't want to say the brand name, but like I'd gotten booked for a trip to Canada and I was the only covered blogger that was there. And I had known other girls that were up for that campaign that were supposed to do a pretty big campaign. They were up for that campaign that, that didn't get chosen. But mm-hmm. I knew those girls as very devout Muslim hijabis mm-hmm. who really enjoyed believed and a hundred percent put out their like authentic version of what their life in hijab was like is like and continues to be like they're still you know that is still that that is them Mm -hmm. and i had taken that spot knowing full well like once i had taken it and i'd gone there and i realized that they didn't get chosen i was like why am i token covered girl when i don't feel like i represent token covered girl well or just not token covered girl but like covered girl well you know like that's not something that i'm like so now I'm taking money away from other people. I'm taking representation mm-hmm. away from other people that actually will represent it better than I will represent it. And I'm only getting it because I'm the larger one or I'm the more palatable, a little bit more westernized, tattooed. She's kind of cool. Mm. So then are you really picking me to represent, you know, uh, the Muslim population? No, you're, yeah. you're picking me because I'm palatable enough yeah. for you. Because you're like, white enough. Because I'm white enough, yeah. you know. And so like it just didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't sitting right anymore. And it just felt more and more awful to be online and and be taking campaigns from from women that I and I knew why I was being chosen you know what I mean I knew that they were whitewashing things I knew that they were like westernizing making it more palatable for for a larger audience like look we did have a Muslim girl on this campaign yeah but was I was I representing it well enough for all of the other girls to be missing out on this opportunity no no 
And so it just it began to feel worse and worse and worse and worse. And it only went on for like a couple months before I was like, I think I'm done. I sat down with my team. I was like, I, I'm done. I need to do it now. I walked into the office and I was like, I'm putting it live. Like, I'm done. I had already been walking around in Kuwait without hijab for like five days before I had decided to, to do it. And I was like, I don't want somebody else to catch me without it on before you I... caught. Yeah. Yeah. Before I... Before, I didn't want someone else to catch me yeah. not walking around no and having announced talks. it. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. No, no, no. So then we we we, we announced it. I got dropped from a, a show I was filming. Um, I got dropped by a lot of campaigns. Oof. Uh, there's a, a large brand, uh, in the end, Zionist, so who cares? Uh, that decided, I sat down with them as like a PR meeting before we had gone and I was like, this is what's happening. This is what's going to go down. Is it going to affect my contracts? And they were like, yeah, it's going to affect your contracts. I was like, okay, like that that's, is what it is. That's wild to me because it's a personal choice at the end of the day. It just yeah. so happens that when you came on to, or, or when you came into the public eye, you were wearing it. Yeah. But then to be dropped because you made a personal choice that's literally not affecting anyone. but i think i think the being dropped bit didn't bother me as much as i thought it was it's because like that is the reason that i did it right like i did it so that when i could be my full authentic self on the yeah. internet and then i didn't want to be taking campaigns from people um that deserved them and yeah. that representation more than me so like if that's how it happened sucks that you didn't you know want to like support a woman's choice and then we could finish off our contract and then you don't have to work with me anymore yeah um but that that's just it's not how it went down yeah, because you, at that point, I think you're a quota. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, you're the token hijabi. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it well, yeah. it just didn't it didn't feel good anymore. Were you nervous to uh, come online without it at first? Yeah. Um, it, The post that I had put up, I had also put up a video explaining, because I didn't, and the thing that's still more hurtful about this entire, like, subject matter is that people have this idea that I came in used the hijab to, to get famous, to get to where I wanted to go, and then left it. That requires so much pre-planning that, like, that doesn't <laughs> for make years, any... You I, I, for <laughs> years? Like, I played the long game for 10 years? <laughs> for ten, <laughs> 10... Psychotic. Years? <laughs> Am I a psychopath? <laughs> That's crazy! <laughs> like, who goes in with the foresight to be like, this will be my thing? <laughs> and then as soon as I'm hot shit... It's and and like, it didn't even exist back then as well. So it doesn't make any sense. So that's so hurtful. Like, bro, do you think I really played the long game? Like, you must. <laughs> they think I don't you're know. a genius. No, I, I could be. I could have been a genius, but I don't think that that was the kind of genius I am. I'm like a mad scientist, not a proper scientist. Like, I don't. It makes no sense. So yeah, no, that bit. That bit is hurtful. So I came yeah. up with a video explaining why I was doing what I was doing and how I didn't feel good anymore and like it didn't feel authentic and like I had promised myself that I was going to be authentic on the internet. I don't want my kids to look back and see me on vacation without it but see me on the internet with it and I don't want that explanation to have mm -hmm, to like go yeah. down and like what does that mean for them what are they learning from me that I do things for other people instead of doing yeah. things for myself so like no I didn't I didn't want to do it anymore so the post that I went live with um I got 21,000 21,000 comments 21,000 comments I'm like I turned them off at 21,000 is when I turned it off I was like I don't actually have to read this abuse anymore like i don't have to do this i'm doing were it were they mostly so people, negative yeah it was it was it was mostly really abusive i, just, I don't understand my friend that. found out from it being published in a in a newspaper <gasps> yeah. yeah yeah it was a huge thing like when i i didn't expect it to be this way and i think it's because i should have expected it maybe because i made the point of talking about why i did it and what was the reason but that's because i was modest by asia for riva all over the place modest by asia hijab uh turban that was my whole thing. Yeah. And I was like, I can't just mic drop it yeah. and like expect people to be like, okay, cool. If that works yeah. for other girls, that's great. But like my entire career was like really formed around that. I worked with Neta Porte on like mm -hmm. modest. I was their first modest fashion blogger that worked with Neta Porte. That was a major thing. So you for feel me. like people started uh, relating like the word modest with like you. And yeah. And, and like fair, <laughs> you know, like did fair. you at that point understand that it was a brand? Like, were you honest with yourself and was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm branding modesty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel good to, to, to brand mm. I mean, something that's that, it just, it, I don't know if it was me. I didn't intentionally brand it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was life choice number one that I was canceled for. Life choice number two. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, life or, choice number two was like the explosion of the nuclear family of, yeah. you know, us being a family blogging group. That that was a that was a hard decision to have to go onto the internet with. It's less because like you 
as humans, we change. Like, nobody stays the same. Like, no. you, 10 years ago, did not think the same way you do now. Mm-mm. Like, I also was a, a previous Mahajabeb. Oh, were you a Mahajabeb? <laughs> yeah, I was a Mahajabeb. MSA says. <laughs> she, she, can't, she can't say hijabi or niqab. It has to be Mahajabeb and niqab. It's just niqab. 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 Living. And for me, like, that was the thing. Like, I wore it until I believed in it and yep. then i was like okay i don't believe in it anymore so am i really wearing it for, for you for yeah myself or for people mm-hmm. and i realized i was mostly doing it for, people, for other people for other people and i was like that's not the point of wearing the hijab mm-hmm. so i don't believe in it for myself mm-hmm. you know what i mean right now so you know like i can't imagine being in the public eye and changing like and, and people expect you to stay the same, like have the same I- uh, ideals, like mm. have the same. Don't grow. Don't don't grow. Don't don't. Yeah, evolve. make Just no changes to same. anything. Yeah. yeah, which is not it's not realistic. If everybody everybody changes, like it's uh, if if I met somebody that I went to high school with or that I knew from fifteen years prior and they were still the exact same person, I would be concerned. Mm. Like if you think about it, you would be really concerned for anyone that's still stuck in yeah. something. And I'm not saying like take your job off and like run wild and like I don't know you know it's it doesn't have to be an extreme but like there there are incremental changes that happen over years and years and years together you know but I think that's a that's a reflection of people so I think whenever people get really attached to someone in a specific moment it's not about the person they're attached to I think it's about the moment in their life so you changing represents maybe a moment in their Mm -hmm. life that they don't have anymore an innocence that they've lost so I think it's it's never about you but then everyday life you see these comments obviously you're affected yeah. it's like what yeah. am i gonna do I not change maybe a lot of girls looked up to you because you represented them and then they felt like you kind of turned your back on them which is not the necessarily the case but i feel like people just don't get that yeah i'm, I'm, I'm like to an extent my heart hurts for that because like i i'm i'm happy that people can see like a reflection or like not of themselves but like you know parts of themselves and the things that i choose to do that's great that's the community that we're trying to like form together it's like you want to meet like-minded people that have more or less kind of the same outlook on life that you do so I can understand how it feels like a betrayal to 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 have this idea that this is the same person that has the same outlook on life that I do and and relatively the same belief system for me to be like jokes you know (laughs) not that instance (laughs) but like (laughs) lying like I'm no it wasn't it's not an intentional thing we just we grew this way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you're, you're here and I went this way. <laughs> I deviated. <laughs> like quick As deviation. any normal b- would, but like as any normal person would, but then, you know, obviously people feel like they know you yeah. because you're so open and because you've been so open for like over a decade now. Yeah. How do you deal sort of with people thinking that they know you and then assuming things about you? I don't know where I don't know where it was that people have like this idea that they know me as well as they know me. I'm glad that I'm like a I, I am like a very like person, like everything that I need to everything I feel I say, you mm-hmm. know, but it, I don't have one of those um, like I don't run lives. You yeah. know, I don't I'm not live interaction with people. I don't I don't do a lot of like, I don't know, talk things where like I'm live interacting with someone. I don't have a podcast. I don't I don't have a YouTube channel where I'm putting like so I don't really understand where the attachment to my personality or like me as a person like comes from sometimes I I don't have that with a lot of people on the internet. I don't have like this like attachment. Yeah. You know, when someone announces that they're pregnant, I'm like, oh, congratulations. I'm not like, I knew as hell. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I, are you going to name it after me? Like, it's not, I don't know. So I, I, I'm, I'm grateful when that happens, mm. but also it's such a responsibility that I don't want to carry <laughs> just because like it's, I'm, I'm, I'm so fallible. Like I'm, so human and i screw up so much i screw up so much dude i am like i am i'm therapying the house down trying to fix my like all of the ways that i look at life and fix it and approach things and like i'm really i'm so fallible so like how can you like anyone online when you know like you're this fallible do you know what i mean i'm like i'm this much of a screw up i can only imagine what this person is like and this person is like and I wish that we showed that a little bit more online, yeah. you know? Shout out Belle Hadid showing us she's crying all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Love her. But you know, then it's like, it's a fine line, right? Oh, yeah, no, it's no. a fine line. You do because like, if I'm, if I'm crying on the internet all the time, I look crazy yeah. because I've cried on the internet multiple times. Like I've, I've cried. And, like, have but, you like, cried? Or have you Trisha Paytas cried or the kitchen floor <laughs> cried? No, I have not. No, Trisha, you know, I'm, I haven't. I haven't. The only person I will allow 
to do that is Trisha Paytas. When she does it, I'm like, yes, you, you cry, girl. You cry. You let the tears out. <laughs> but you know, the, it's the process of releasing that content for me. Oh, that oh looking at a, yourself, you mean? But no, see, like it when I cry on the internet, I cry on the internet when I'm in the middle of like a Snapchat story or an yes. Instagram story. Mm-hmm. And I know it's going to go away in 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I don't no, know. No, it's not. People are going to screen record Yeah, yeah, so they screen record it. Like, let's be real. But uh, I don't, <laughs> I've never, I've never... <laughs> It, it makes me laugh when I think about it. Well, because if you think about it, like, no, I, because because when you film yourself crying, dude, there is the exporting of <laughs> that image. And then there's the editing, the editing process of you going, <laughs> editing it down a thousand times. And so, like, every time I see someone crying for real season and edit on the Internet, I'm like, you committed. Like, <laughs> you committed to the cry. You had to go through a good couple hours of editing that post. And then you had to do the post itself. So you know you repeated that song like seven yeah. million times with you like <laughs> cry snorting I mean, in the background. Did Trisha Paytas ever edit her video? I feel like she so, just recorded no, back, it and just puts it. It's still, so, back I just, then, she, like that era, no, I think it was like, because there were no breaks. Okay. I had, yeah. I had nothing to do during just, COVID. Like, get a bunch of food and cry yeah. and eat, and, and I'm like, I get it, girl. Like, I understand. We've all had those moments, but do you really want to put that on the internet? The answer is probably no. Like, if I could go back and take <laughs> these off the internet, take them off the internet. But like, what can you do? But like, that's the same thing. It's like I didn't have the, I didn't do the, the, the I. You don't think about it. You're like the cry yeah. and then the edit and then you put it out and then you were like and then but I did that to myself <laughs> you know at that point <laughs> when I'm releasing it I did that to myself anything that happens back there I did it to myself it's the same thing I like I'll, I'll put something up on Snapchat where like I have like a couple tears and then I'll delete it four hours later after enough people like I've already watched it and I'm stupidly like am I okay with this no I'm not okay with this so I can't imagine doing the whole thing where you're like edit clip down put it online <laughs> it, it, this it, is it, a it good cry yeah. if it's if, if it's like natural and organic do you remember don't do you remember no, i'm not talking about trisha paytas no, i'm no. talking about <laughs> our episode the dead dad girl episode dead dad girl ah. club. Well, well, we well. could not so we, we had a dead dad girl club episode episode because we're, we're both... part of the dead dad girl club <laughs> you're a part of dead dad girl club yeah. interesting yeah. yeah that explains so I, I don't know why yeah. we're smiling no, while we're saying it we're like yeah <laughs> no, i love a little dark humor <laughs> Mama. i love a little we dark cry humor about it all the time yeah. of course so yeah, of course, I like her on the phone. We're crying in the car. We're just crying. Literally in the yesterday, she calls me. I'm like, <gasps> yeah. and then I get in her car and start. Like, <gasps> so it's. I'm sorry. It's fine. Yeah. It, nothing hurts after that. You. Are, yeah, you just like carry grief with you in a different way. Yeah, now. yeah. But when she, did you guys lose your fathers? Four years ago. Four years ago. Nine, almost nine, nine years, years ago. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, we did an episode where we talked about it. It was a heavy episode. Okay. And Do you remember the editing process for that? The editing was tough. Yeah. Forget the editing. The filming process when everyone was crying. Yeah. 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 We, we were, there was like a very like somber kind of uh, mood after yeah. the yeah. episode in the studio. Even Farouk was sad. Yeah. Just I crying did it. on the internet. I cry Sorry. all the time. It's okay. It is. Me and I cry. Like up. if I talk about something that's happened to me, I'm fine talking about it. I look at Mia and she's like, cry <laughs> it, yeah timid you know what i mean yeah. like there's always got to be one one that's like bawling and one that's half no but their i stuff only together. have two ones anyway it's like laughing massive for crying okay yeah that's a good two to oscillate between i want to rewind mm? on so you mentioned you know having sort of the nuclear family on the internet mm. i want to rewind to the moment you got married and decided to sort of be public about that on the internet because i think even that was not normalized at the time in the middle east yeah, I would say that we were the first um, couple, really, to come out mm-hmm. on online in the way that we came out. And but you know, I it was it just was like a natural progression of things. I don't think there was not like a plan to do it. It wasn't that we were going to be like couple blogging or family blogging together. It was just a natural progression. And then also, uh, my ex husband's job had a lot of um, constrictions on like what we were able to do online anyway. So it just we didn't we. It wasn't intentional. It just happened whenever it could. And then when it didn't, it didn't. And it was just mostly me with the kids, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you choose what you want to show the world? Because kind of like you kind of want to keep some things to yourself. Mm. How do you did you like at the time decide like, OK, I'm going to show this. And but this I'm kind of like, I want to keep this private. Yeah, what's the or, filtering process? Oh, yeah. I think it's changed a lot in the last couple of years. There was a point where my kids were online a lot with me. And then I started kind of just thinking about what their digital footprint online looked like and what that was going to mean for them in the future. And 
um, how what I what their image portrayed online was actually like. Did I did I do a good enough job in like protecting them and their information? And um, but there was a moment where I remember standing in the avenues, and Adam was two at the time. I was pregnant with Noah and Adam was having a full meltdown, like full two year old. It's time to have a meltdown. We're melting down. And like when we're melting down, there's nothing I can do about the meltdown. I'm not going to we're in public. So it's like bad timing. But like also, yeah, he's two. Like, what can I do? So I was standing there with his stroller and I'm like heavily pregnant and he's on the floor. I'm by myself and he's on the floor and like screaming top of his lungs. And I'm like, I'm here, bud. Like do you need a hug? Like, do you, what do you, what do you need? Like, I'm just gonna power through it. Okay, like, okay, 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 we got it. Okay, okay. I'm standing there waiting for it to be done. And a person came up and interrupted me to take a photo with me. And I was like, I, I'm just dealing with my, my son real quick. And then they took a video of him having a meltdown. And then there were people that took videos from us from afar of me standing over Adam waiting for him to finish having a meltdown. And I was like, it had circulated and then gotten back to me on WhatsApp. And I was like, I, I think I'm done now. Like, I don't, I don't, I, this is so unnecessary for my child. And, yeah. and that was, that was only one, that was the the last one before that. I had one where somebody had, I was shopping, uh, I was in Topshop. I'm in Topshop and Adam was right next to me and I'm going through stuff. And I don't ever have a nanny with me. I'm always just me and the kids. And so I'm going through things and he wanders around and I can always see him. And then I look and I couldn't see him anymore. And I was like, Adam, Adam. And I'm freaking out and I'm freaking out and I'm freaking out. A woman came and picked him up and took him to the back of the store because she knew who he was and wanted to take a picture of her child with my child. No. And didn't ask me, just came, took him and took a picture with her child. And, when, and she heard me yelling for him in the store and did nothing. And by the time I got to the back, it was, it was maybe like 15, 30 seconds, like if that. But like, yeah. that's a lot of seconds that is, for a yeah, mom to be yeah. without her child. And like, I freaked out. And so I asked her, well, I'm like, what are you, what were you thinking? She's like, Epis, I watch him every day online and he's just so sweet and he's much. And Adam is not that kid. Adam is very standoffish in real life. And online, he looks like he's not because like he's with his mom and his dad and yeah, his family, whatever. And so he's comfortable. But in real life, he's like, don't touch me. I don't know you. Don't look at me. Don't take a picture of me. Don't, my, you know. And so once Adam had gotten to there, it was like a good two years, two and a half. And all of that stuff has started happening. It's like, I'm, I, I think I'm going to scale it back. Yeah. Mm. And so I scaled it back quite a bit. And then I stopped showing their faces online for a little while. Um, and then COVID happened. And all I had to do was be with my kids in an apartment. So they were online with me again a little bit more. And I didn't like it. It was just like, I can't keep up with like I just, yeah. it doesn't. So yeah, now they're, they're, they're very rarely online with me. We, we have a lot of discussions about it. Yeah. I don't know about the what to keep, what to not, you know. I, I learned along the way. Yeah, Did you talk to them about it like this is you know mommy does this mm -hmm. and people look yeah okay yeah yeah no they know my job pretty well okay. I think they know my job now pretty well but Adam Habibi was the one that got the brunt of it because like Aww. that was what, I'm a young mom I was yeah. 20 it's always the first yeah I was 24 yeah. I think I was 24 when I had him or the only <laughs> yeah so I was 24 when I had him I was really young and like I I don't think I understood the weight of yeah you know Anything online with a kid 25 doesn't count yeah. front of lobe <laughs> Frontal lobe's not there? Yeah, yeah, no, frontal lobe was thing. not finished being developed. People do not cut, like, influencers or people who are in the public eye slack. Because, it, like you said, like, you're 24, you're learning as you go. Yeah. But then people think that because they see you online, because you're putting yourself out there, so they are allowed to have access to you all the all time. All the time. Even in person, whether it was, like, you know, picking up your child and taking him and they're like, oh, but, like, you know, I thought he was so cute, but... That's like crossing a huge boundary. I think it's because, you know, before that, we didn't have, um, we didn't have, we had, we had celebrity. Mm. Yeah. You know, there was, there was a normal, there was normal people and then there was full celebrity and full celebrity was like they're acting or they're singing full celebrity. And so there was a big gap. It was like, I am this person. I don't own this. I don't have this talent. This person does this talent. I idolize them for it. I love them for it. And there's a gap between how close you feel to that person. Cause mm -hmm. you're like, I can't act. I couldn't sing. I can't do what this person is doing. That that's a talented person. They are where they are for influencers. You know, for us, we're like, not that. And we're yeah. not this, mm -hmm. you know, we're not, we're not completely like normal, unknown f fly under the radar people, but we're not at the time full, full celebrity. We're somewhere in between. So the, the, the barrier between 
me and other people is much thinner. Mm-hmm. And if I was doing my job right, mm-hmm. and I am doing my job right, and trying to be as authentic online as I can, then I should feel like a good friend of yours. But like, <laughs> with a boundary, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. don't pick up my child. And so like, when I realized that those boundaries were not clear to everybody, they were clear to me, but they weren't clear to everybody else. I was like, I am Let's put in yeah. some some boundaries into place. It's a parasocial relationship. I think that's the yeah. thing. And there's no blueprint for how to deal mm-hmm. with that. And I think all of us almost have that with maybe a celebrity or an influencer or someone that we look at a little too much where we're like, oh, you almost feel like you know them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think especially with, with people like you who are vocal and who speak, mm-hmm. because it's not like you just take pictures. Mm-mm. You do things, you talk, You people know what you're like. I think they can even imagine what you'd be like. It's almost like there's no excuse for any behavior, but it's, I think it's like, also more relatable, it. like to them. Yeah, it's like okay, you're course. you're more relatable. You're an so everyday like, girl to them, you know. Yeah. And like, but I am. I'm just an every like we're the same. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. all the same people. It's just that I, more people watch what I do every day than what you do every day. But we're the same. It's mm-hmm. the same. It's the same yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. So yeah, no. If I'm doing my job correctly and doing it with passion and like with uh, authenticity, then great. I'm really glad that we have that, you know, connection. Um, and I always say that I have 30 seconds. Like I have literally 30 seconds with each person. It, like if you come up to me and it took you so long to convince yourself to come up to me because this happens to me. It's happened to me. I have a great story about this. It's happened to me. Um, if I have 30 seconds to match what you see online to what you see in real life. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I've failed in all of the time that I've put into my job for all of the time that you've watched me online. If I if it's not the same in those first 30 seconds, then I'm I'm not, I've done something yeah. Not yeah. right like i'm not matching up to what you know I, I i should be there's an expectation yeah of what my personality should be like but then that takes away the the the, the humanness of i'm having a shitty day mm-hmm. like i have a toothache i got a headache but like i put that pressure onto myself where because like i've had really bad experiences with like having someone that i really enjoyed online and that's why when you ask me do i have a style person that i really i know i don't because like i've stopped having an online person mm-hmm. that i like to watch religiously that i can form a connection with because they will Mm -hmm. all disappoint you i will disappoint Mm -hmm. you yeah we will all disappoint you we are never ever going to match up to the version that you might have on your head of someone i'm gonna disappoint i'm gonna disappoint you so like the the 30 seconds i have i'm gonna do my best Mm -hmm. and if i disappoint you i disappoint you but like there's nothing else i can do from there you know it's like i i i I made my first impression as best as i could like i tried as best as i could and that's all we can do No, but I, I, I don't think people give you enough credit because honestly, I think you, I can't imagine you being disappointing to anyone and not oh, like that. A hundred percent disappointing really? people. Yeah. yeah. Because like I, with you, like I, I, I do feel like there is authenticity. Like, you know what I mean? When, when we see you online and then when we, we meet you in person, like at least that's been yeah, I hope so. our experience. I, I feel like you do your, your, your integrity like does translate, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And. I hope so. I think that like the last um, week of, you know, block out party was really hard for me. Mm. And I, I was like, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Because in my in the behind the scenes of everything that I've done, I'm I haven't made money in 10 months. I'm, I've worked in here. I've worked in this for 13 years. I've never not gone 10 months without making money. Like even COVID, I made money. I wasn't I've, I made nothing for 10 months. You know what I mean? And so for me to be included in block out when like I know perfectly well m- what my intentions are and how much sacrifice that we've made in the background and where I stand morally with my team, that was really hard, you know? So like, yeah, there's a there's a part of you that works so hard to be as authentic online as possible. Yeah. And when you fail it and like, because it doesn't feel right to live any other way, right? Like mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to have two versions. I don't want like a PR polished version for the internet and then the version that I actually am in real life. Yeah. So they should match up. And if they don't match up, then I'm not, I'm not doing what yeah. I my due diligence on my end I'm not being kind to myself it's not even about being kind to an audience it's about I'm not being kind to myself because if they had this person thought this about me and like that, that's not matching up then what did I do wrong but then there's also the failure of communicating right so like the 10 months that I haven't made money I don't want to communicate that online this is the first time I've said it out loud ever in like a in a, anywhere with a microphone <laughs> so like it's not something because then it looks like performative activism oops performative activism so like there's a really fine line on like am I being authentic enough am I being performative am I you know, it's it's like the constant second guessing of everything that you do on the internet is yeah. the hardest bit, I think, of influencing. I kind of want to um, talk about um, how it's affected, like, your social circle as well. Like, being um, 
like gaining popularity like has that kind of shed light on you know who's kind of coming into your life with an agenda or how do you filter that like I feel like you kind of have to have really good intuition and, and good bullshit radar so has that kind of affected your personal relationships with friends I don't think I have a very good bullshit radar that's like first and foremost like I want to believe the best in everybody at all times and like I will do that until you absolutely fail me you know um and I'll keep trying and keep trying and keep trying until like <laughs> no you failed oh shit you failed you failed again your star sign <laughs> I'm a Libra oh do you know you're rising and you're a moon I'm a Libra is there Libra cancer? rising and then I'm a moon cancer yeah. <gasps> I yeah. knew I was I was thinking it. I'm like yeah. I knew there was water in there I'm How a cancer moon too congratulations oh wow you cry that's why we cry moon. yeah I love a good cry yeah it's very cathartic a little too much <laughs> like crying a do you have any other much. water placement or is there a Pisces in there as well I don't know what's your Venus in I don't know you're rising do you know you're rising let's just do it I love how after. we're like we're doing a turn after I'm pretty sure I'm a Libra rising but it's just because I never remember my birth date my birth time so my mom, because my mom is woo-woo. I don't, nobody oh, knows this, but my mom yeah. is so woo-woo. Like, she is crystal lady. Like, I was raised by woo-woo. It's important to have a woo-woo mother. Yeah, it's woo-woo so mother is important. great. Like, my mom has been on her, like, woo-woo for so long. So, like, it's, it's great. I've turned out, it turned out pretty well for woo-woo. Uh, so, yeah, no, and I still don't know. Okay, well, we'll figure that out later. But okay. we know that your moon is in cancer. Uh, cancer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my so moon much. is in cancer, and I think my rising is also is Libra. I think so. Is that okay. possible? No. I, it is possible. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. My sister is uh, a Libra sun and uh, Libra rising. Okay. And Ooh. a Scorpio moon. Oh. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio moon. Doesn't that explain But I'm a so cancer much. rising. But uh, I, so my sun sign is fire, but I have like 70% water placement. Doesn't so wait, what does this mean? It means I'm mush. I'm all mush on the inside. So wait, but what does it, but wait, 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 wait. What is the rising? So the rising is what? Emotion? The rising is the first, first impression, impression when that people, people get. Okay, rising is first impression. Yeah. Yeah. So rising isn't even, like, it's not that important. Like, it's important It only- is kind of important because I do feel like I project cancer when I first meet people. Like, I kind of go into a shell and people yeah, think I'm shy, that, you know? but I'm well, not. And I pr- I pr- I, you, you, <laughs> you know, actually, I don't, I don't see that because I- that was not my experience with you. Really? No. I don't present I don't, as a Virgo. It depends. If I'm in an uncomfortable situation, okay. I can be a cancer. Okay. Yeah. What are, I can just be an asshole. <laughs> Same. Like Libra? that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> the chat? I'm just an asshole in uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so can I be an asshole rising? Your moon, <laughs> your moon is basically it governs emotions. Mm-hmm. So when you're mo- the most comfortable at home, that's when you project your moon. And then uh, Venus is relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, Romance. Mars is uh, communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah and what are the, no the, mercury is communication then your mercury mars? is communication i don't know what mars is but different um planets kind of dictate certain I need to aspects know my venus of life. Now, like I but i feel like the big three that you have to know are sun rising and moon That's these so ones are the ones that affect. what are your big three <laughs> usually uh, big three <laughs> For, like forget like asking any relevant questions like what do you do for work you know what are your aspirations yeah yeah are you single married like i don't care i want to know your big three yeah, yeah no no i've gotten big three as That's like the a first, first question yeah. yeah yeah a lot of people ask me big three you think i'd be more invested in figuring it out and i don't know <laughs> we're obsessed literally yeah. if i'm working with someone i'm like what's your sign oh. and if it's something that i can't work with i'm like ooh. i love working with a virgo they're so specific yeah. That's why I, when uh, I went to get my tattoo in Turkey, obviously I uh, asked Mia, I'm like, send me where do I go? recommendations. And where I do like, I go? Where you go? And then she sent me one and I wanted like a, like a fine really line. good like okay. fine line. So I go and I ask uh, the girl, I'm like, what's your sign? And she was like, Virgo. And then immediately I was at ease because I'm like, I'm in good hands. Yeah. And she was amazing. It matters. You're, the, t- the tattoo artist matters because like yeah. that's a, that's energy that you're you're receiving from somebody yeah. else. You know what I mean? 100%. And yeah. that's going to stay with you forever. Ever. For, well, forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. Let's finish how she filters through people. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a good bullshit radar at all. But um, with social media, I became really, really, really insulated. Like super insulated. Like I think that I had two, two very close friends. Yeah. That's about it. I was super insulated. Like I didn't, and I, and I worked with those same two people. Um, and then my manager was his family. And, you know, it, I became super insulated. It was just easier 
than trying to figure it out. And then, and, and also because I had kids, like, and mm. I had young kids and I was, I was, I was, I like cloth diapered my kids. I breastfed my kids. I was like, I was woo woo momming them yeah. too, you know? And so I was really hands on with the kids. I needed to be hands on with the kids. And whenever I wasn't with the kids, I was working. So there wasn't really much time for me to be like a yeah. friend, you know, friend so it was time. more circumstantial. It was more circumstantial. Yeah. It was like, and, and there's still, those two girls are still in my life. They still, we will still work together. We're still great. But yeah. I just, I became much i i was so insulated like i was so insulated and then um it was only the last two years after my divorce where i've started properly trying to make friends again and like go out and meet people and go to gatherings and like go to things like i i never used to really do that i wasn't that person do you find that you have a fear maybe of people coming out of the woodwork or has that happened before like with like a story or something like was no, that been, part of it i've been very blessed in the in that i've never i don't feel like i've ever had a relationship with someone as a friend or on a personal level or a professional level i don't think i've ever had the feeling of being taken advantage of mm. or like someone wanting to be my friend because of what it is i do i i think yeah i, I don't think i've ever had that and that i think that's also partially because like who am I really like mm. why do I like why am I putting in my head that this person could possibly be wanting something or using me for something like it's just who am I really like that I feel like to go into that or to assume that from a relationship that's now like just budding or a conversation that's happening it's like that's a very that's a very inflated sense of self yeah. mm. you know for me to be like this person must be taking advantage <laughs> like, and who of what <laughs> like mm. i've got nothing <laughs> you want a joke i'll not tell a joke you know <laughs> you want me to stud some shit i'll stud some shit for you but you know why wow i got nothing so yeah no i don't think i've ever i've been really yeah easy peasy on that regard i love that yeah yeah, yeah. but i'll stud something for you if you want all right just to <laughs> kind of wrap this part of the episode up okay do you want to ask that question yeah <laughs> okay mia go ahead and Ooh, ask that love question. being controversial do you like eggs? <laughs> oh my god, if that was the question, that is so controversial. Um, if you could take anything back, would you? No. I think it's time to get into the Ooh. juicy stuff. Oh. Oh. Um, I didn't we're going to start talking about... Divorce babes. Divorce, divorce babes. Yeah. Divorce babes. Are we all divorce babes? No. I'm, I am. I'm never married. Yeah. No one wants to marry me. <laughs> divorce babes. I don't even know where to go from there. I don't even. <laughs> Did you just say nobody wants to yeah. marry <laughs> No one wants to marry Which is a lie, but you know. But, but yeah, I perfect. don't I think I believe. Well, I have been proposed to. But okay. Uh, yeah. Like, no. no. That's fair. She's smart. <laughs> yeah. No. I, you know, you know, I'm, I, this is a, this is a heavy, it's a heavy one. <laughs> you know, it's a heavy one because I love my ex. Like oh. I love, I love my ex. He's a great person. Oh. So like a hard topic. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're not going to make it about. No. Him. No. Yeah. Why am yeah. I crying? Why did I cry when you said that? Mm. Allah, the way you said that was so like, it was so genuine. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. No, it's Fuck such a. Well, Stay, stay tuned for part two where there's more crying and more tea. <laughs>